for me, when I, I look at the the white paper and it, it, you know, it confirms a direction of travel, it perhaps takes a, a more gentle, pragmatic approach to trying to achieve that with that 30, 2030 deadline. But I think in my first very quick look at the school's bill sort of confirms this. It does put in place some of the tools that the department may pull on over the years to come if it needs to, to, um, to give more incentive or more motivation in terms of to look at schools joining trust. And I think the big thing that's different about this iteration is that the um, before it was about all schools being an academy trust in, in an academy trust by certain day. Now it's all schools in a strong trust, and I know we'll we'll talk a bit more about that later by 2030. So a subtle, but I think very important difference. You know, it's talking about families of schools very firmly and strong performing uh, families of schools at that. Will, did you did you have something you wanted to come in on on the the white paper? Your reflections? Uh, yeah, I think. I think it was a bit of an anticlimax in one sense. That might have just been, I was expecting a bit too much. It feels like the first of many steps. It does set out that that broader vision. And I picked up exactly the same thing around the focus on the word strong trust. I think the challenge now is how the definition and assessment of strong trust come into play. But a, yeah, as a boring old accountant, the thing that really caught my eye was a, an explicit reference to the fact that um, trusts should aim to make the most effective use of centralised processes and back office functions to empower schools to focus on teaching and knowledge building. So a very clear direction of MAT does compliance and management to allow schools to flourish and provide education. And that kind of very clear distinction has perhaps been lacking um, previously. So, so that was that was good to see in one sense. Yeah, 